Hey, what's going on, fellas? What we're looking at here are some photographs that T-Dog sent me from Africa of some waste gas combustors. And they're having some problems with these things. The flame they put off is just too lazy, and it's causing damage to the assets in the facility. So they're going to completely remove them from one part and only allow them to run in the pyrolyzer. But I'm going to help design them something a little bit better to pull this job off without destroying everything. So what we see here is a very large, lazy flame. This is about 52 kilowatts of heating power here. This is the maximum amount of propane you can get to come out of a 20 pound propane canister. So let's look at what happens with just a little bit of air. This is just air from a blower. Um, we can get this effect with as little as 115 watts of electrical power. So you're not really looking at a whole lot of sacrificial power. So let's take a closer look at what we got going on here. All right, T-Dog, let's go for a little walk here. I'm just gonna try to narrate what I'm seeing here. This is about 52 kilowatts of gas coming out of a propane bottle to simulate the waste gas coming off your guys' pyrolyzer. So what we're gonna do is introduce a little bit of air this is the night test that gives us a better opportunity to observe the actual characteristics of the flame because the day just washes it out completely. So there are a lot of different uh, flame settings available. Even at very low amperage or low wattage, we can get some extremely good benefits. This right here is very high wattage, not an ideal setting. We don't need to run it this high, but um, I just wanted to see what it would do. This is the first time I've fired this thing up and I had no idea what it would do. So there we are again with no fan and this is what it would look like at about one PSI coming off the pyrolyzer or whatever. So let's add some air. I think the first test is at 85 watts here. Double check that. But this is uh, probably the ideal setting we would want to use. Okay, that's 144 watts, my bad. It is snowing outside and very windy, so the actual characteristics of the flame are being inhibited just a little bit, but it's good that it's kind of windy out because this just goes to show us that the flame stability is good enough to endure any type of firebox turbulence that may take place. This thing is very stable. Okay, here is the 85 watt test. And even at low wattage, um, it's not, anywhere near close to blowing out very nice flame profile this could be a pretty good setting for what you guys are doing you can see that's just a real nice burn inside of there we're getting a real good mix so the complexity of this nozzle was kind of going for that feature without that complexity you don't get as good of a mixing that you could otherwise and I felt that this was probably the best way to apply a low pressure gas to what may be a higher pressure blower air. We don't want the blower air messing up the gas flow. So that's what this nozzle actually pulls a vacuum on that gas line rather than affecting the amount of gas that could come out of there. Because based on the design that I've seen from you guys, I could see where if a guy turned the blower up too high, those blowers can provide up to four PSI of boost. So if you turn the blower up, um, too high, you could reduce the amount of gas coming out and, and pressure up the tank a little bit. That's not a good thing. Here I'm looking at um, different gas settings. The blower is on the same setting the entire test. You mentioned that the BTU output is very erratic. So here I'm doing a test on erratic gas output to determine if this combustion chamber is stable enough to handle extreme changes in gas input and as you can see I was unable to put this thing out in the test we are going super lean and the stability of that primary combustor right there is really helping out when the gas flow gets kind of low if we didn't have that primary combustor cone on there that feature probably would not be present the turbulence in the firebox from the draft fans would likely blow it out but as you can see here this thing is just unstoppable so we're getting a real good mix the complexity that I put into the nozzle was worth it um, if I would have just drilled two holes in a piece of metal and swirled the air around in there it might not have worked as well at lower combustion rates it may have 
but I really don't have time this week to experiment with notions. I knew for a fact that this would work. I knew for a fact that this would allow us to not have the blower affect this very low gas pressure. This thing can definitely uh, put out very high power flame. I was only able to achieve a maximum of 52 kilowatts of output gas on the propane bottle I'm using in the experiment. I have the bottle sitting directly next to a fireplace to get it as hot as possible so that we don't suffer boil off during the test. And uh, it did pretty well. I wish I would have had about five times this much gas to work with though because I believe this nozzle can do some pretty amazing things. Here's a daylight shot. I started this test for you in the middle of the day and you just couldn't see the flame features well enough. But um, so I just decided to call it off and do a daytime test. So, we, but I wanted you to see this um, interior combustor because you could see the interior combustor so much better during the day than you can in the night shots. And it's definitely got a really good internal combustion going on there that's going to give us that flame stability we need. But as far as building this thing, it's quite a complex little uh, piece of kit. I'm glad I have a plasma table because I'd be dead if I had to drill all these holes out of stainless steel. So it did take a little bit to put it together. Um, when you're working with this many parts, the best thing to do is braze. So I'm using a 45% silver solder brazing on this. It's about $12 worth of brazing rod we're looking at there to pull this job off. But uh, it was well worth it. I'm using an oxyhydrogen uh, gas modified with propane to pull this job off and it did brilliant. And uh, this is pretty much what we ended up with. Real nice looking little um, laminar flow tubes. These are where the propane gas is ejected into the system. And this is our Ventura shroud that allows the air pressure to pull a subtle vacuum on those tubes so that they don't inhibit the low pressure gas output no matter how high we turn that blower up. Pretty complex little piece of equipment, but this is what it takes sometimes. All right, guys, the rest of this video is basically just the GoPro footage of the night test in its entirety. It's probably about 20 minutes long, and it just shows everything that I did. All the highlights have been removed from this footage, so, but there are some things that, that you may want to look at. There are some uh, very high power settings that I did not exhibit in this video because you won't be using, uh, well, T-Dog won't be using that burner at that setting. He's, his job will not be um, allowed to have so much sacrificial power. So I just wanted to see what this thing can do for processes that may have extra electricity available. And uh, in this case, we want to use the least amount of electricity as possible. So I didn't really show some of that in the beginning of the video, but somewhere here on this GoPro footage, you may see where I turn this thing up to extremely high power with the blower up to 500 watts or more.
completely off. Need to cool it down though. I want to melt that hose. 